Stereotactic guided breast biopsy is designed to calculate the exact location of the breast abnormality. Calcifications and masses are examples of the types of abnormalities that can be biopsied using stereotactic guidance. The Suros ATEC Pearl and ATEC Sapphire breast biopsy systems are compatible with all major prone and upright stereotactic systems. In this presentation, we will be featuring the ATEC Sapphire breast biopsy system with the Hologic Multicare Platinum Prone Stereotactic Biopsy Table. Diverse needle options are available to address all of your patient needs, regardless of lesion location or breast tissue. The Suros ATEC family of products offers 9 and 12 gauge handpiece options that are best suited for stereotactic breast biopsy. Once the patient is ready, position her on the stereotactic table and compress the breast. The technologist selects the image acquisition mode and x-ray technique that is appropriate for the lesion and breast composition. A scout film and pair of stereo images are taken. Enhancement tools and filters allow image manipulation to improve contrast and sharpness and to help ensure accurate positioning and localization of the area of interest. The technologist initiates one or more stereotactic targeting sequences. A Cartesian coordinate system determines the precise position of the lesion in the X, Y, and Z planes. The area of interest is then targeted by the technologist or radiologist by marking the lesion location in both views of the stereo pair. Once targeting is complete, coordinates indicating biopsy needle position relative to target position for up to six targets are transmitted to the display window on the stereotactic table. Cleanse the skin surface thoroughly with an antiseptic solution. At this time, a syringe containing additional anesthetic can be attached to the ATEC Y valve. This permits additional anesthetic to be pulled into the biopsy cavity during each cutting cycle. The disposable needle guide is placed in the needle guide holder on the adapter using aseptic technique. The ATEC stereotactic adapter is secured to the top of the stage and tightened in place by turning the wheel. Check to make sure the adapter is secure, not tilted, and in the cocked position. This can be done by moving the cocking lever 180 degrees forward and then releasing it, allowing the lever to fall back to the resting position. It is also acceptable to cock the adapter prior to securing the stage. Once the adapter is secure, raise the stage to biopsy-ready height. The ATEC handpiece is placed into the adapter, sliding the needle through the needle guide and locked into place. Once the handpiece is in place, secure the device by engaging the retaining clamps into the appropriate grooves located around the handpiece. Check the security of the handpiece by gently pulling back on the handpiece. The ATEC device is then Z0 to the reference point on the compression paddle with the multi-care table. The needle must be backed away from the breast before initiating the automatic targeting sequence. Activate the automatic targeting system, motor enable and target position to move the handpiece to the identified X and Y coordinates. Using the manual Z-dial located at the back of the stage, move the ATEC device with the needle tip to the skin surface of the breast to ensure accurate anesthetic placement. To increase patient comfort during the biopsy, an anesthetic is injected to numb the skin surface at the area of interest. Deeper tissue will then be anesthetized by injecting deep to the target site. The tip of the biopsy needle will extend beyond the target site, so it is essential to administer anesthetic beyond this point. Remember, if a syringe of pain medication has been attached to the Y-valve, this pain medication delivery system will assist with patient comfort as well. Turn the ATEC console on, which automatically closes the aperture and prepares the needle for insertion into the breast. A skin nick is made by a surgical blade to allow easier entry prior to advancing the needle to the biopsy site. Manually advance the needle into the breast until the Z column of the differential line reads minus 2. If compression is below 32 millimeters, use a petite aperture needle and advance to minus 6 on the differential line. Before firing the ATEC stereo adapter, take a pair of pre-fire stereo images to determine that the area of interest is correctly targeted. Activate the view stage cursors to ensure that the injection of anesthetic has not caused any lesion movement. 
The ATEC adapter is then fired by pulling the release bar out and down to advance the adapter 20 millimeters forward. The technologist takes a pair of post-fire images to ensure the center of the aperture is at the area of interest. Cores can be taken at any clock position at the discretion of the physician and depending on the location of the area of interest. The position of the aperture opening, or clock position, is indicated by numbers located on the middle section of the handpiece. Typically, six to eight core samples are adequate for pathology purposes. An audible beep indicates you are at the end of a cutting cycle and it is safe to turn the handpiece to the next clock position. To prepare for the procedure, the physician places their hand near the back of the handpiece. The physician depresses the foot pedal to activate the biopsy system and continues to depress the foot pedal throughout the tissue acquisition sequence. Tissue acquisition occurs every 4.5 seconds. The manual rotation of the handpiece occurs during the resting phase of the 4.5 second cycle just after the audible beep. When the necessary core samples have been retrieved, release the foot pedal and switch the console to lavage mode by pushing the button marked lavage. Lavage mode continuously delivers saline to the biopsy site and aspirates the biopsy cavity, allowing loose tissue and other fluids to be cleansed from the site. Lavage the cavity until the fluid in the collection chamber indicates the cavity is clear. To retrieve the sample cores, leave the console in lavage mode and disconnect the saline line at the proximal end of the Y-valve. The cores are now ready to be retrieved from the tissue collection chamber at the back of the handpiece. Place one hand on the handpiece and the other on the collection chamber. Rotate the collection chamber counterclockwise to disengage the container from the handpiece. Remove the tissue filter basket and place a new tissue filter basket in the collection chamber. Place the chamber back onto the handpiece and then reconnect the saline line. Using your fingertips, grasp the thin metal wire at the top and around the tissue filter basket. To avoid losing any samples, before pulling up on the wire, tilt the tissue filter basket toward the specimen collection dish. Use the wire spatula or forceps to separate the tissue samples on the prepared surface to be imaged. Continue to lavage and aspirate in the biopsy cavity. This will assist in preparing the biopsy site for biopsy site identification placement. When you have verification that the samples have been successfully retrieved, disconnect the saline line at the proximal end of the Y-valve or at the yellow connector. You are ready to begin marking the biopsy site by placing a biopsy site identifier in the biopsy cavity. For this demonstration, we will be using the ATEC Trimark Biopsy Site Identifier. If you used an ATEC Petite handpiece, begin by dialing back the Z knob 3 millimeters. If you have used a standard ATEC handpiece, dial the knob back to 7 millimeters. This allows the marker to be deployed in the center of the cavity. Rotate the handpiece to the desired clock position. The most ideal position is with the needle aperture facing the radial center of the biopsy cavity. Stabilize the handpiece at this position by depressing in one of the retaining hubs near the front of the adapter to ensure that the handpiece will not rotate while deploying the marker. Remove the tissue collection chamber and tissue filter basket. Insert the black rubber stopper in the filter chamber. Let the tubing hang with the stopper in place. Remove the deployment guide from the applicator and assemble it to where the filter chamber was connected. Carefully advance the deployment device through the deployment guide and continue to advance until the device reaches a definitive stop. Locate the white directional arrow on the aperture indicator and ensure the arrow faces the same direction of the handpiece aperture. Deploy the marker by pressing the plunger with your thumb. An audible and tactile click confirms deployment. Release your thumb from the plunger and rotate the deployment device 180 degrees. Unlock the retaining hub clamp and rotate the handpiece 180 degrees. Dial the Z knob back 20 millimeters. Take a single stereo image to check placement of the marker. A final zero degree image with the device removed is recommended to compare your post-procedure outcome to your initial scout image from the beginning of the procedure. After confirmation, back the needle out of the breast and decompress the breast by slowly releasing compression paddles. Immediately apply pressure to the biopsy site. 
When pressure is no longer needed, apply a Steri-Strip or other bandage to the biopsy site. Help the patient to an upright position and discuss post-biopsy care. Appropriately dispose of all used ATEC product, such as handpiece, marker, deployment device, canister, etc.